So what exactly is mentalism? And can you show us an example? Yeah, of course. So, um, so mentalism is really an ancient practice regarding the subconscious mind. So, but if I use the power of my mind, what I can do is I can actually make it start to, to go like this. One. What the? the see the cup start to go. How are you doing that? It's Welcome back, guys, to the show, Digital Social Hour. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Got an amazing guest for you guys today, mentalist expert, Joshua Earp. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. So what exactly is mentalism? And can you show us an example? Yeah, of course. So, um, so mentalism is really an ancient practice that has existed for thousands of years regarding the subconscious mind. So, for instance, um, Let's try something real quick. What I'd like you to do is think of somebody's name, but somebody that, you know, you haven't thought of before. Um, you know, it could be like a like first name, last name. That just make it up? Uh, no, someone that means something to you, like a childhood friend or, okay. or something of that matter. Yeah. Okay, so you got one in your mind? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now with mentalism, what we do is, you know, it's very easy to change your mind um, pretty much, you know, uh, on a split second. So what I have people do is I usually have them write it down on, for instance, say a piece of paper. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'm gonna stand up and look this way. Okay. All I'd like you to do, don't let the camera see or anyone behind you or anything. You're just gonna hold it up so at least I can't see and just write very clearly the, you know, the first name and last name. Okay. And when you're done, all I'd like you to do is rip out the piece of paper like this and then go ahead and crumple it up and put it in your pocket. So it's very simple. Okay. And then you can go ahead and close the notebook up and just set it aside because we don't need it back. So just okay. hold it up like this for me. Cool. If you don't mind, um, what I'll do is I'll make sure to, you know, oh, basically not it. look. Yeah, don't let the camera see. Don't let me oh, don't see. don't let the camera see. Yeah, don't let anybody see. Okay. Especially me. So. First name, last name, totally fine. Okay, I wrote it down. Tear it out. Yes. You crumple it up. Yeah, you just crumple it up, and then you can put it in, in your back pocket, your front pocket, your rest okay. pocket, whatever. Okay. So now, is this someone that you've known for a while? Yes. Okay. Now, now, how long have you known this person, would you say? Uh, since first grade. Since first grade, huh? Yeah. That's, that's interesting. First grade. Well, I'll tell you what. I, um, let's see. Oh, oh, you have the pen and paper. So you can just yeah. fold it up and just fold it back up and just set it aside. I don't want to see anything. Okay. So the oldest broadcasting and receiving station was not the radio or the television, it was the human mind. Mm -hmm. That's how we can think about someone and all of a sudden they start um, you know, calling us or texting us. Now, um, I know we're a little plugged in here, but can you come over here real quick and just grab my, my wrist just like this? Yeah, um, and okay. think about, yeah, think about that person as hard as you can. Don't be afraid to hurt, just as hard as you possibly can, like your life depends on it. Think of this person's initials, okay? We'll hold it up a little so the camera can see. So think of the person's initials, you got it in your mind? Yeah. Okay, now, now go ahead and stop. You can let go. Now look. Look really closely. Tell me if you can start to see something appear on my arm. You should be able to start to see it. I'm starting to see like a, it looks kind of like a B. Is that the first initial of this person? Yeah. Okay, so I see a B and then I'm seeing something like a, it looks like a C. So I see, look, you can see a B and then a C right here. You can see that starting to appear on my arm, can't you? So, so is that the initials? It's B, C. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. Maybe not because the light. Um, but B, C. So, so you can see it pretty distinctly. Now, now the crazy thing is, is this person, it's, um, this person's like, um, I, I want to say this person is a female or, or it's a female, correct? It's a male. Or it's a male. But they have a female name. This could be androgynous yeah, where it name. could be. So it's a unisex name. Um, they're also, uh, this male, he has, a, think of what this person looks like. Um, imagine that, let's see, I feel like they have kind of slightly darker hair. Is that true? Like, not like super dark, but it's slightly dark, yeah. right? Okay, now try to send me the thought. I'm going to try to think. Um, and by the way, we don't have anything set up beforehand or anything like that, correct? Yeah, you don't know this person. Okay, so are you thinking of, um, I want to say the first letter is a B, Bailey? 
Yeah. How do you think? Shout out to today's sponsor, Gusto. Something always comes up when you're running a small business. Well, Gusto's payroll and HR services can make that a little easier for you guys. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment, all that stuff you don't like to do, Gusto does it all. If you want even more, they do time tracking, they do health insurance, they do 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, other letters. They also have access to HR letters. You get the idea. They got pretty much everything you can think of. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your own business. Super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, they'll transfer all their data for you. No surprise, 94% of customers recommend Gusto. Yes, that's 94%. Want all this and more with no hidden fees? Try it out for three months for free at gusto.com slash social. That's gusto.com slash social. Thinking of uh, Bailey, let's see. And you can really see it now on my arm. Are you thinking of Bailey K Capra? Is that who you're thinking of? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Is that it? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's nuts. That's crazy. So, so that right there is called thought transmission. Yeah. And so we're able to transmit thoughts just like Dr. Masaru Emoto's famous water study where he, you know, our bodies are mostly made of water. And what does water do? It reflects and it can transfer information. So, uh, so it's a very interesting thing to be able to do with the power of the mind. I mean, it's similar to if I were to take, for instance, this, this cup. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but if I use the power of my mind, what I can do is I can actually make it start to, to go like this. Watch. What the? the see the cup start to go. How are you doing that? It's, it's called telekinesis, okay? So, so telepathy is thought transfer, being able to transfer thoughts to each other, right? Yeah. Telekinesis, also known as psychokinesis, is the ability to move objects with your mind. I can bend forks, I can bend silverware, I can make things move, I can levitate my body with both feet, etc. Uh, we've known each other for several years, so you've yeah. seen some of this stuff. Um, but speaking of metal, what I'd like to do is I'd like to borrow, maybe there's someone in the other room uh, that has like a key, for instance, or like a or a fork or silverware or something like that. Uh, can we get the nice uh, gentleman that uh, we talked to before? I think he had a key ring. Maybe yeah. he can come in and, and uh, give us a key. That would there be great. There he is, Alan. Alan the man. Okay, Alan. So you two don't even know each other. So no. this is all authentic. Yeah, we don't know each other at all. Now, here's the thing, Alan. Um, well, I guess I'll have Sean do this. Um, so let's do this. So Sean, so this is your key, right? Yes. Okay, now here's the thing. I, all I'd like you to do, Sean, is, is put either your initials or just draw a, um, or just draw like a picture. Make sure that there's only one key in the entire world that is like that. So just put my initials? Either your initials or, or just draw something unique that you would never think that I would, I, I would think, basically. Okay. Got it. Okay, I just came unplugged there for a second. All right, I'll take the pen back. You can hold on to the key. Thank you very much. Now, why don't you go ahead and show the camera? I can, I can see. It doesn't matter because uh, this isn't a, a okay. prediction effect. However, go ahead and just show them and just really zoom in on that if you can. I don't know if the camera guys can zoom in on that or not. Um, I'm going to try to stand up without getting unplugged here. I feel like I'm uh, a part of the matrix. Can I see the key back real yeah. quick? Okay, so this is your key, correct? Yeah. Um, and, and what was it that you draw? Go ahead and just tell the camera. What I drew a triangle. Picture? Okay, so he drew a triangle. Now, now what's the best camera for, for them to be able to see this, would you say? Yeah, probably that one. Okay, so look, so he drew a triangle. But here's the thing about the triangle is, is that I can actually take the key. It just kind of depends. Now, do you know what a key is made out of? By is it metal? Um, it is metal, but it's a certain type of metal. Sometimes what I can do is watch, I don't know if you guys can zoom in on this. I'll try to sit down and do it. But you'll be able to see the key. This is a borrowed key. Start to just, look, start to bend, look. <laughs> and it's starting to twist. Come here and check this out. Look, look, it's happening more and more and more. That's crazy. Look at this, look. I can actually take it. Look, with my bare <laughs> fingers, look. I can break the key. This is real metal. Look, listen. Holy what I'm able to do is with the power of the mind, this is your key. Look, it's still signed. Yeah. It's got the, the emblem. I have no idea what you're going to draw. Please make sure that that's your key still. I don't want you to think there's some other key or anything like that. 
That's great. So, so um, you can keep that back, or you can take that back, by the way. Keep that as a souvenir. And uh, just let people know you got a friend named Josh, and if they mess with you, they're messing with me, and they may end up like that. So, um, wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so that's, I'll take the pen and paper back, too, if you don't mind. Yeah, just, here. Okay, cool. Just so we don't lose it. So, um, so, anyway, so that's mentalism, and it's a really cool thing to be able to do because, you know, you're basically, what I am is I'm a performance artist that demonstrates the power of the subconscious mind. Now, I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm involved in the movie business. There's a lot. We actually, uh, I didn't even get the chance to send you my bio, so maybe we'll, you know, we'll go over that maybe in the comment description or, or whatever, yeah. right? Um, but, however... I uh, just wanted to show that with you guys, and uh, and hopefully you uh, enjoy it. Man, so how have you been able to take these skills and use it in the business world? Because you have powerful abilities. You're probably able to read some minds, right? Absolutely. Well, the power of the mind of the person affected is the true cause of the effect, hmm. not the power of the mind of the supposed source, hmm. because the latter is merely calling it into operation. And so, you know, this ties in with mindset and personal development because you know, and maybe we'll talk more about personal development later, but it's the thing is that success does not far exceed personal development is what I found. And so by, and so, so usually success is not pursued. It's attracted to you by the person you become. Mm. And so, and we attract who we become. So instead of going out there looking for it, you're, you're focusing on yourself and becoming the best ber version of yourself to attract what it is that you desire by becoming what you desire and the type of person that deserves what you desire and um, what you seek is also seeking you. Wow, that's crazy to think about because most people, like you said, chase the money, chase Absolutely. the fame, chase whatever, but you're saying to work on yourself first and it'll come to you. Yes, and the word money comes from two words, mono, which means one, and E-Y in Latin is I, so it's one I. Mm -hmm. That's what money is, one I, right? And what's the symbol on the back of the $1 bill? Uh, it's a pyramid, a pyramid with pyramid, one yeah. eye, right? And so not to get too esoteric involved into occultic matters and things of that nature, um, but, uh, but it's very interesting for people to understand the history of things and what they really truly mean and, and yeah. what the covert plan is behind the means of control that most people call money. Right. And one of the fascinating things I saw you do was you rewrote neuroscience with the founder of the God Particle. Absolutely. So his name's Dr. Katsushi Arasaka. And uh, he and I, you know, we've got, uh, you'll see like images and videos of us speaking on stage together um, on my Instagram as well. So maybe we'll include a tag on that later. But, um, but essentially what we've done is, so he discovered the God particle. He helped build the Large Hadron Collider for CERN in Geneva, Switzerland. And he runs the largest direct detection of dark matter experiments, such as Xenon, Side, and the Lux Project out of Sasso, Italy. Um, which dark matter is is sixty five point five trillion dollars an ounce, um, which would be equivalent to about uh, a lot of money, <laughs> and um, and you can all, you can look all this up. You know, Google Dr. Katsushi Arasaka dark matter. Um, Wait, so they found it? Um, he runs the largest direct detection of dark matter experiments. You know, whether mm -hmm. they found it yet or not, that's the the experiment God, that God. they're doing. By the way, I can really see that BC here on my arm now. That's it's like nice. rising up through my skin. It's pretty crazy. Um, so, so, th so the way that worked is, um, so, but also at the same time, I played a hand in helping him rewrite neuroscience because we found out that there's a couple millisecond delay of the processing of information between the eyes and the brain. Mm. So what that tells us, and this was out of the UCLA department of, uh, physics and astronomy. So what that tells us is that it's not our eye, it's the excitation before the inhibition. So what that means is. It's not our eyes that see what's around us and then broadcast the message to our brain. Yeah. It's actually our brain that begins with the image first and then our eyes broadcast outwards what's already inside of us. And that's Whoa. crazy because it's crazy because, you know, it explains things like manifestation, you know, yeah. and the law of vibration, the law of attraction. It, it explains all that. But also not only, and this is multi-million dollar, like, like um, you know, basically transmission uh, tracking devices, et cetera, that they have set up where they can tell the, the, the speed of which information is transferred. Really high tech stuff, cutting edge technology breakthroughs. My credit was for my incredibly deep insight in what's called neocortical phase integration. Um, but essentially, you know, when you study the ancient mis uh, metaphysical studies um, that have existed for a very, very long time, like Hermeticism, 
you'll find out that there's old quotes out there that say, you know, or sayings, which is as above, so below, as within, so without. Mm. So, so that's how manifestation works. And so the ancient esoteric metaphysical studies back up the new cutting edge technology and science of neuroscience. And, uh, you know, I also spoke on stage with Dr. Joe Dispenza and, you know, he's also very, uh, you know, my friends are the German, uh, you know, individuals that, you know, run his, uh, research department, research yeah. and development and, and science and technology. So it's all very interesting stuff for sure. Yeah. That dude's a legend, man. The stuff he's been able to manifest. I mean, he Absolutely. cured his spinal injury just from brain thought alone. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. And thought is esoterically known as thoth or thought, which is, um, uh, and, you know, it goes back to ancient Egypt as well. So mm. very interesting stuff. I explored one of my past lives a few days ago, and I actually used to live in Egypt. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah so the word alchemy comes from alchemet, yeah. which is, um, you know, of Egypt, right? But the thing is, though, is that true alchemy is not the alchemical transmutation of base metals into gold. It's also, which, by the way, you can read the Theatrum Chemicum Britannicum, which was Sir Isaac Newton's. Um, you know, uh, Bible essentially on alchemy, which contains real recipes to turn base metals into gold. That mm. is like using mercury and things like that, which is why they call him Hermes Mercurius Trismegistus, because mm. mercury is the only thing that can, you know, um, purify gold, as they say the Hermeticism or Hermetic traditions are the only, you know, religion, if you want to call it that, belief system that can purify the human soul. Wow. So true alchemy is not just the transmutation of base metals into gold, it's the transmutation of a human soul into a divine soul. Mm. And that's what the word religion comes from. It comes from the Latin root religare, which means union. Mm -hmm. Same thing with yoga, that's Sanskrit for the word yug, which also means union. So what that means is all religare or all religions are merely precious jewels on the golden string of divinity. Mm -hmm. It's union with divinity. And so, um, so it's very interesting to note that. Yeah, that's cool. You're also part of Hollywood. You're heavy in the music industry. You were part of the project, The Bay, which won 23 Emmys. What have you learned along that process? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I originally started out, I'll just give you like a little rundown. So at eight years old, I started doing magic and mentalism, and then I progressed into hypnosis. So I'm one of the world's fastest hypnotists by records. Wow. Um, by doing what's called instant inductions and shocking the central nervous system, triggering the amygdala, uh, basically bypassing the critical faculty and implanting a suggestion into the subconscious mind. Mm. And the, sub, the reason why hypnosis works is because the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and non-reality. Mm. So what that means is basically, and that's why it's so important, as Jim Rohn always says, you have to be the doorman of your own mind. Right. Because you know, every time I hear an advertisement or I'm walking in a mall, I always try to cover my ears or get away from <laughs> it because it's like a factory. Whatever enters into the subconscious mind becomes reality. That's how you can have a dream and, or a nightmare, I should say, rather, and you're laying in bed and, and you're asleep and you're having this nightmare, but when you wake up, you're sweating. Mm. You're physically sweating. It translates to the physical. Right. The reason why is because, you know, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and non-reality. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it believes that that snake or whatever it was that was chasing you in that dream or you falling or whatever it was, they perceive that as a real threat. Mm. So, so that's the way that that works. And so, so anyway... Uh, stage hypnosis, which I used to do it also, street hypnosis, was my first business. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn marketing. This is going to lead up to answering your question in a roundabout <laughs> way. Trust me, we're, we're getting there. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is that basically, um, sorry, I thought there was someone uh, you know, signaling me over there. So what I was going to say is, so stage hypnosis was my first business. Then I had to learn marketing to market my show. Right. And then from there, I learned search engine optimization, which right. I'm one of the top, you know, they say I'm one of the top experts. I'll never call myself that in SEO because we reverse engineer Google's patents. We develop standard operating procedures and software to be able to do whatever is in the patents. And that's how we guarantee rankings on the first page, your money back. Um, and so that, that was my business for a long time. And that's how I ended up speaking on stage with Steve Wozniak, the founders of Apple, mm -hmm. all the way down to teaching the courses for Ty Lopez, the number one internet marketers in the world, like Frank Kern, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, right? So, um, so, so I was always pretty connected and I always had, um, this, you know, I was very fascinated by entrepreneurship. You know, I come from nothing. So, uh, you know, what do I have to lose? Right. And so, so I moved to LA about, uh, you know, 10 years ago or so. And there's an old saying that says, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, eventually you get a haircut. 
So I just started networking and networking and networking with royal families, billionaires, celebrities, international yeah. icons, thought leaders, you know, whatever the case is. Basically everybody in your network, right? Yeah. Cause you No, but yours some, is next level. You've got some crazy people. <laughs> well, well, I appreciate that. And you are one of the top people in that. So I appreciate you. And um and so the thing is, you know, I got involved in the movie business and and because they knew I had the ultra high net worth individuals in my network. So they approached me in the movie business and and now, you know, fast forward to today, we share an office with Michael Bay on Venice Boulevard. And, wow. and you know, we have, uh, you know, quite a bit of deals going on and a bunch of other really cool stuff, you know, so That's we're, amazing. Uh, yeah, so it's really cool. And then the Bay, you know, I helped do the marketing and publicity. If you look me up on IMDb, did the marketing and publicity for the Bay, which won mm -hmm. 23 Emmys. And, you know, we're on set to break a lot of records and, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. That's insane, man. You've also been able to generate over a hundred million dollars for your clients. I mean, when you have the ability to generate money for your clients, it's a powerful skill. Yes, Was exactly. That SEO? We, yes, because we take a percentage of the money, right? That right. we help generate them. So it's like saying, if I hand you $100, will you hand me $10 back? If the answer is yes, then I'll hand you $100 bills yeah. all day long. <laughs> so, um, so absolutely, yeah, we've, we've, you know, I've advised Dell Computers, you know, we've, we've had clients like Disney, Warner Brothers, City National Bank, Coca-Cola. It's on our website, realizethemarket.com um, and things like that. But yeah, we've had a lot of success which is merely the progressive realization of a worthy idea or goal. Mm. So that means the woman working at the gas station is just as successful as the man that is, you know, uh, studying to become a doctor, yeah. given that that's what he or she wanted to do. Yeah, that's fascinating. You have an interesting take on health and cancer. Can yeah, you explain? Health, health in general, yeah. So, so from my research, um, and, uh, you know, basically cancer is not a disease. It's a survival mechanism. So, hmm. so what a tour, what a tumor does is, um, it houses all the toxins in that specific location, AKA a tumor due to, to, to all the toxicity through our diet, lifestyle, stress, et cetera. And it, it needs a place to house those toxins. Hmm. So they house it in what's called a tumor to protect you. Cancer is not trying to keep Cancer, cancer is actually trying to save your life. Really? It's creating a tumor, a place for all those toxins to be so that they don't spread to other parts of the body. Hmm. Okay? So it's actually, cancer is actually trying to save you. It's a survival mechanism. So when you go to a doctor, the first thing they do is say, okay, well, let's take a biopsy. Um, well, what is a biopsy? It's where they prick the tumor and they see if it was cancerous or not. Well, yeah. first of all, whether the tumor is cancerous or not, your passive treatment is still the same. So you don't actually need the biopsy. In fact, most people don't actually die from cancer. They die from the treatment of cancer. Really? Yes. And so, so when they take that biopsy, remember that it's, we're dealing with healthcare, so there's no money to be made off healthy humans. Right. And so when they prick the tumor, they're opening it up and allowing the cancer cells and all the, the harmful toxins to now spread throughout the body. Jesus. So now you go from having a tumor on your breast or whatever it is, and um, which, by the way, is trying to help save you. And uh, and the interesting thing is that now they do the biopsy, they come back, you know, a little bit later and they say, OK, well, now the cancer is spreading all throughout your body. So we're going to have to, uh, you know, charge you more money and you're going to have to do more radiation, chemotherapy and all that, et cetera, which is crazy because Dr. Otto Warburg, who discovered cancer, he won the Nobel Prize for discovering cancer. He said, quote unquote, that no disease, including cancer, so this is any disease out there, mm. any, sing, any single disease, including cancer, can survive in a highly alkaline, highly oxygenated environment. And when you go to a hospital, especially, unfortunately, a lot of you know, famous children's hospitals, what's the first, what are the things that they do? What are the things they don't do? Chemotherapy, radiation, all that, you know, as I say, uh, which radiation causes cancer and all the, the good cells that right. you have as well. Um, but, and then plus you have to recover twice, once from the cancer and once from the treatment. Yeah. So it's even worse, but, um, you know, they don't give you an alkaline diet. They give you a very acidic diet. Mm. Um, they also, you know, most of the time don't give oxygen. And so, um, so it's, it's a very, very crazy corrupt cycle. It's all about money, which is for the love of money, right? That yeah. is the root of all evil, which the word evil, uh, first of all, there has to be evil for us to be able to evolve. Right. So, so that's the first thing, but the word evil is just the word live spelled backwards. Whoa. And so, and so <laughs> if something's the opposite of life, it's obviously death. So if somebody's evil, they're killing people. They're not promoting life. Wow. So, so that's the whole thing to understand there. And then we can get more into intracellular chelasis and 
other advanced quantum healing modalities and, and vibration and sound therapy and all yeah. types of other amazing things. So you believe you can heal any disease naturally? Um, to a certain extent. Now, now it's kind of like being shot by a gun, right? Like yeah. if you're shot by a gun, you can take the bullet out and prevent it from doing further damage. But a lot of times you can't fix the damage that's already been done in right. certain cases. So everything's different. Obviously, do your own research. I'm not a doctor, nor do I claim to be. Um, because doctors go to school for 10 years or so and read textbooks that are funded by pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> and the pharmacy, the word pharmacy comes from the, the Greek word pharmakia or pharmakai, which is mm. which literally translates to witchcraft and sorcery. Wow, are you serious? Absolutely, look it up. Gary. I know. No, it, it really is scary, man. I try to treat everything holistically as much so, as possible. So here's the thing, what you and I are doing and why you're so powerful and why I have so much love and respect for you is, is just like Napoleon Hill said, you know, an exchange of information between two individuals mm -hmm. is infinitely more powerful than an exchange of resources. Mm. And that's where you get the word knowledge, right? It also says I'm, I'm by no means a scholar in the Bible or overly religious or anything like that. Um, but I'm very spiritual, which we'll talk about what the word spirit means and spirituality, what that actually means. Um, but for lack of knowledge, my children shall perish. I believe it says something like that in the Bible, which is based off the Torah, which, uh, you know, ties in with the Zohar, which is Luciferianism, which ties back to the uh, Kabbalah and Freemasonry and ancient Babylonian mystery traditions and mm -hmm. the Jesuit order and the illuminated seers of Bavaria, now called the Bavarian Illuminati, et cetera, et cetera. We can go down the whole line. Um, but however, um, knowledge is the key thing here, right? That's mm -hmm. why an investment into knowledge or yourself pays the best interest. Mm. And knowledge comes from the Greek word gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, -S, which is... Um, where you get the term Gnosticism, which is Greek mysticism, mm. just like the Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism. Wow, that's fascinating. I saw you say on another podcast that NASA's images have been faked. Oh, yeah, yeah. So NASA was started by a Nazi scientist named Werner von Braun. Um, and it was he was a, came over to America from Germany uh, as a part of what's called Operation Paperclip, where mm. the U.S. hired the top German scientists and um, you know they decided, hey, we might as well hire hire them because it's better for us to have them than to have you know Russia or China have them, right? Because that would be bad for the U.S. And so they hired them, and um, and yeah, there were some heinous crimes and against humanity that were committed by um, you know the government of the United States of America all the way down to um, scientists. You know, I heard by the way, speaking of science and following the science for all you science followers out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I heard that just like politicians, scientists, 98% uh, of scientists agree with whoever's funding them. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, a little funny joke there. But uh, but anyway, so NASA comes from the, the Hebrew word nasha, which means to deceive. And so it's not about my opinion of whether they're faking these images and rocket launches and everything, which a lot of rocket launches are actually fake. Because really? if you follow, if you type in rocket launch, yeah. right, right now on Google Images, you'll see it distinctly goes in a parabolic curve. So it's not actually men in outer space going into outer space, which by the way, interesting thing, some claim that, you know, the earth is flat, which I'm not sure if I 100%, you know, agree with that because I think it's, I'm more of the hilly and bumpy type of guy. Okay. I don't think it's completely flat, but according to spherical trigonometry, I also don't think that it's perfectly round given the calculations that NASA gives us, right. which we can break that down later. That's a whole separate thing, but Interesting to note is Werner von Braun, who created NASA on his tombstone, has a Bible verse referencing the firmament over the earth. Mm. And so what's interesting, and even says in the Bible, the firmament, obviously, blah, blah, blah. But the interesting thing is, um, so rocket ships go out of controlled or out of view and land in controlled waters. And it's a huge money laundering tax scheme. Whoa. And, um, you know, billions, if not trillions of dollars. Um, no wonder they live up to their name. And the logo, because this world is ran by signs and symbols. It's not governed by words nor law. Mm. But you have to learn how to translate the symbols. And so if you look at the symbol of NASA, it's distinctly the ring around Saturn, which Saturn and Satan are the same thing. That's why there's the hexagram on top of, of Saturn, which is you know consists of six sides. There's that number six. But um, the interesting thing is, and all corporate logos like Nike, that's not a check mark. If you complete the loop, that's distinctly the ring around Saturn. Um, hmm. Saturn and Satanism is the same thing. Saturnism, Satanism. Um, and so, um, and not only that, but that red, that's specifically a red forked tongue from a reptilian. 
It's a, like a snake's tongue, that logo. Of, Nike's logo? Of NASA. No, no, NASA's oh, logo. NASA's logo? NASA's logo is a circle yeah, with, yeah, the with the ring around ring. Saturn, which is Satan. And, and then you have the reptilian forked tongue, that red little thing right yeah. like this on the NASA logo. So what it's very- That's crazy. Um, and then you've got, yeah, I mean, I can get into it and I can do all this stuff, but uh, I don't I won't want to go that far because, you know, and I've had dinner with Buzz Aldrin, as I mentioned to you before. And, and you're you know, able he to has read a, his mind. So you know for sure if he landed or not. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I mean, the fact that they picked up a, a f oh, sorry, I don't want to curse. You if maybe if I can, but the fact that they picked up a house phone from the White House in 1970 yeah. or 1969, they picked up a house phone yeah. and called to the moon. <laughs> okay. Just, just look, look, forget about your belief systems, everybody at home. Just forget about the belief systems. It's propaganda. It's going to take more than you listening to, to a 30 minute podcast to, to break an entire lifetime of programming. Okay. Yeah. So unless you're an elite individual uh, mentally, um, and you, you're actually open-minded, which your mind works best like a parachute. If it remains open for too long, it will mm. sooner than expected. Um, and uh, so anyway, it works best when open. So, so the whole thing is, um, I forgot exactly where we were. We're covering so much ground. Buzz Aldrin, you met him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had like? dinner. Um, you know, he didn't reveal any information to me or anything, obviously. But you're able to read him. Um, he is also a Freemason and so are all the other um, guys involved. What's and, a Freemason? Uh, so Freemasonry evolves from the Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. So it's basically Judaism for Gentiles. In fact, if you take Judaism out of the Freemasonic ritual, what is left? The mm -hmm. answer is not much. Right. And um, you know, Judaism is a is the eldest of the monotheistic religions. I love the Jewish people. I love you know the Godfather. My son discovered Adam Sandler. You know, wow. Randy Terrell produced his first movie. He's a part of our company, SavantEntertainment.com. Nice. And uh, you have the attorneys of Paramount and everything else. And we'll we'll go over that maybe later. Um, but I love everybody. I don't care what religion, what race, whatever. You're either a good person or a bad person. Right. So funny, people ask me, what do I do? I mean, I'm a polymath. I do several things and I like to think that I do them well. Um, but one of the responses I, I give is, what do you do? I say, I'm a professional negative energy dodger. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. I, so if I see negative energy, I go the other way. I, I don't care. That. You could literally be blue and, and make up your own religion and this, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't really matter to me. You know, you could have any political view you want. It's you're a good person, you're a bad person. You want to wow. help people, you're evil, or you're a part of live, right? Which is evil backwards. So that's your cool, man. You know, it's you don't put yourself in one group. Not at all. And I have respect for all groups. And um, you know, but going back to Freemasonry, as written by Albert Pike in his book Morals and Dogma, Freemasonry is based off the Kabbalah, which is is Luciferianism, and that's where you get also things like the Zohar, which translates in Hebrew to the word radiance, which also means light. Lucifer comes from the Latin word lucemfare. Mm which means light bringer, he who brings the light. What a strange name to call the prince of darkness, the light bearer. Mm -hmm. And so there's some people like Had Madame Blavatsky who wrote a book, The Secret Doctrine, that says, what if everything they're telling you is wrong from birth? What if the good guy is the bad guy and the bad guy is the good guy? Mm. Um, now, Jeez. once again, I don't know because I'm, a wise man is one who knows that he does not know. So mm. all this stuff is just stuff that I've researched. I'm not claiming it to be true. I'm not claiming it to be one way or the other. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so there's that. And then, and then, and then also the Kabbalah, et cetera, is based off the ancient Babylonian mystery traditions as well. Mm. Um, so that's, you know, and Iraq is modern day, uh, Babylon or wow. sorry, uh, modern day Iraq is yeah, ancient Babylon. Josh, I've learned a lot, man. We definitely got to do a part two, but where can people find you and what do you want to close um, off with? Yeah. So yeah, we didn't even get to all the questions. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm over here riffing. <laughs> um, so I'm on Instagram at Joshua.earp. Earp. I'm related to Wyatt Earp, like the movie Tombstone and all that. And um, and so there's a lot of fake accounts of me out there. So make sure you go with the verified one. Joshua.earp. Earp is how you say my last name. I'm also on Facebook. And uh, you can also go to realizethemarket.com or savantentertainment.com and maybe a few other things.com. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's my pleasure to be here with you and exchange information. And uh, just, um, I, like I said earlier, I've got a lot of love, respect, uh, gratitude, appreciation for you as an individual and what you're doing. And you're not just a successful person, you're a humble down to earth guy and you truly wanna help others. So anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Thanks brother, I feel the same about you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.